What's up everyone? Let's talk ground pods versus tripods. Some of the advantages, disadvantages. Give me five minutes. There's a possibility that we could reduce your camera support load by a magnitude of five to 10 times. There's, a, there's some serious advantages. And for you kind of ADD guys, Instagram, TikTok, yeah, uh, I'll shorten it up for you. Yes, definitely advantages. You want to look at maybe adding one of these little bad boys into your, into your wildlife photography repertoire if you get the chance. Let's get into the details. What is a ground pod? Well, this is a ground pod set up with a 800 mil lens. Let me break it down for you. So in its base form, this is what a ground pod looks like. It's just a holder for your fluid head or your, your head for your lens. Essentially, it's very lightweight. And we'll get into the benefits here. There's about a half dozen dozen and then we'll get into about a half dozen of the things that I like about the tripod over the ground pod. So essentially ground pods or just a metal plate. Here's another one. You can make these yourself, but yeah, this is, I think a pound and a half in comparison to the tripod. This is a 10 pound uh, monster and it is quite large in comparison to probably this two pounder. So, the things I like about the ground pod going moving forward is the fact it's very compact. It's very, it fits right in your backpack. It can fit as kind of a loop over using a little chain and it's easy to deploy and easy to set up. And that's the first thing that really stands out. Something like a regular tripod will take you maybe a minute or two, 30 seconds, and it has a tendency to be noisier than a ground pod. That's pretty much just slide in the lens, you're good to go. This you have to put, put out your legs, make sure you don't hit anything like sticks, branches, and you have to kind of evenly get, get things set up. You have to extend legs if you need to go higher or lower. That's always a pain. So it's time, the noise, and it takes up a lot more space. In comparison, the, the weight, as we mentioned, it's a 10 to one ratio. You got, this is probably two pounds, this is 10 pounds, but it's the huge cost ratio as well. So this, this ground pod probably, or similar ones are probably $100, $150. That bipod, or I should say that tripod, along with the, the head is probably right around 500 to 1,000. It's easy to get $1,000 in a tripod with a, with a nice head on there as well. And so price to performance ratio for handling a big lens, like the 800 mil you guys just seen, that is a whopping 14 and a half pounds. So this whole loadout that we're talking about with the tripod, and lens is 25 pounds, where with this setup and the lens is you know, like 16 pounds. So it's a substantial difference. You definitely feel it in your backpack when you're, when you're moving around. So essentially the other benefit is there's nothing to wear out. Now, I've had a lot of cheaper tripods, other tripods that need oil, uh, pieces fall off, you might run over it. Um, you just can't fix it. You know, there's, there's brackets and pieces and things that just don't hold up well. I've, I've had this for, I don't know, a year or two years now, and it just, it feels like it's practically brand new. Not that the tripods, the better tripods will hold up for years to come. Just know that there's the more moving parts you have, the more things that can go wrong. Another advantage in deploying this is there's less visual movement when you're actually using uh, the ground pod versus a tripod. There's been many times where I've been out in the field and I need to readjust the angle and essentially I've had my legs between the tripod and I have to pick the entire thing up and move. The problem is the legs are really far out and you have a tendency to break your outline, uh, outline and recover. So you, you kind of have a tendency to silhouette sometimes the, the legs or the tripod and, and stick it out past where it needs to go. Not only that, you end up trying to make or you end up making a lot more noise than necessary just from other things. There's nothing worse in the forest than making a metal on metal sound it scares animals like crazy. So essentially, as you know, the ground, the, the tripod is really, really, it takes a large space. And this is minimal space. It kind of fits between your legs or low level blinds. This is where it really, really shines. If you have a low level kind of laying down kind of blind that you'd use on shorebirds uh, in a grass field or anything, it fits in the ground blinds perfectly where there's no way I can use my large tripod in those blinds because it just takes up way too much space. In addition to that, there's some damage that can occur with tripods on um, loose dirt or sand. And that's with the tripod legs. They almost become like little sticks or knives in a tent that after a while it starts digging in and burrowing into the sand and it can puncture 
the hole in your in your um, blind. And so that is another no-no. So in, essentially, it's not really useful in a small ground blind where this, there's just no way it's so round, it just kind of plops there and you can pick it up and scoot it around. It's very easy to work in small confined areas. So ground pods, in addition to working with the foundation pretty well, they actually start from the ground up. Um, and you can, you can put on different extension pieces. So I was saying that they have different extension pieces. So if you have some grass you need to keep going up, you can actually make this into a monopod, which is very adaptable. And it's not too bad. Now, the higher up you go, the more unstable it gets. But for a light lens setup, it's totally doable for something that if you're sitting down on the ground and you just want it about shoulder height to be able to lean into it, it works fine with a, a smaller extension tube in that. So that's about it for the advantages, but there are some serious drawbacks to that. And the tripod has, has some really, really nice advantages. So essentially we mentioned the tripod starts at the top and goes down. So it's, it's best when you actually look for the height that it gives. And someone like me that's fairly tall, the nice thing is, is you can, you can get stability at let's say five and a half, six feet and have a nice big lens, very sturdy, where it's just not possible with your ground pod. Another big one is uneven ground. So shooting on a hill or something that has a steep incline or decline, you can extend a couple legs out and get a good foundation, get, get your tripod buried into the ground and you can shorten one leg up and it helps out a lot more. Generally, ground pods are used for a flat surface, somewhat flat in, in that. So it's just not very conducive to have it on a huge incline or decline. Another one is additionally shooting at weird angles. For instance, you can shoot at products. A lot of tripods are done for product photography. You can shoot straight down. You guys have seen a few videos and, and as far as you can shoot straight up. Where ground pods, you just don't have that ability to note those angles. It's really, it's almost flat on shooting and you're pretty good to go there. So those are the advantages of the tripod over the ground pod, but which one's better? I mean, which one would you know? Now, if I had to go with one device, I would pick the tripod because it's so versatile, even though it's a pain in a lot of conditions. But over the last year, two years, a majority, I'd say over 50% of my photography has been with a ground pod. Simply, it's so much easier to use, so much lighter, and it, you, can use, you can just get in and get out of a place without a lot of hassle, without a lot of noise and it's cheap and affordable, and you can build them your own. So if you guys are interested in getting some ideas or building your own, go ahead and check out my next video, and that will get you started on some good ideas on how to actually build one of these guys. Anyway, see you later.